Early this month, Byline investigated the explosion of candy stores that had taken over Oxford Street. But the weird thing about them is they all look really, really similar. So, so how much for these? <laughs> Who's buying this? <laughs> Since then, 30 of those stores were raided by police. Thousands of candy bars were dramatically carried out in plastic bags. The whole operation was spearheaded by this man, Adam Hug. He's the leader of Westminster Council. The raid this week was one in a series of raids that's brought in over £600,000 worth of goods that are either counterfeit or illegal. 2,246 counterfeit Wonka bars, 2,800 uh, disposable vapes. Yeah, so it's that desk. There. So that was it, that was full, and this was just a fraction of the haul. A haul of a range of different products that shouldn't be being sold on Oxford Street. No one knows where these have come from. We are able to work out that they're fake. When you actually pick them up, look at them, they are not marked by the people who actually own the um, branding rights to Wonka bars, which is Ferrero. Sim similar numbers of dangerous vapes with high levels of nicotine and that fail to pass uh, any health and safety tests. So very clearly, someone has stuck a fake label on these products. So we have no idea where they've come from, what safety testing, what uh, health and hygiene uh, rules are on these products. And they're being sold for massively inflated prices. Uh, so you know, consumers are being ripped off, no, not only by the amount of money, but they can't be sure of what they're buying. So there's that, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. We are owed, as a council, £8 million in business rates. So that's money from the taxpayer because these firms are sort of blinking in and out of existence, operating and then closing down before the end of the year, and then very similar products, people and, and signage appears down the street a, a few weeks later, with the previous firm having avoided paying for its business rates for the year, and that obviously affects taxpayers not just here in Westminster but across the country. Anyone who spends time walking down Oxford Street sees these shops, knows that they're out of place on what is supposed to be not only Westminster's, but London's, and quite often, in many cases, Europe's premier shopping street. There are blights on the street. They are causing huge problems for local authority in terms of enforcement and in terms of missing business rates, but it just really hurts the look and feel of the street as well. Right after the dramatic raids, Journalist Mark Faithful covered the entire incident for Forbes magazine. I caught up with him to find out just what on earth is going on. The whole phenomenon of American candy stores is a bit of an enigma and a mystery, really. It, it seems that a lot of them popped up after COVID or perhaps during the COVID period. Certainly one or two appeared and I don't think people thought a lot about it. It, it didn't seem to be that out of kilter with what was going on on Oxford Street. But then obviously more and more appeared and I think that anyone that was visiting again, commuting back into Oxford Street, revisiting after maybe a couple of years away, started wondering what on earth is going on. And certainly as visitors started coming in from abroad, perhaps hadn't been to London for two or three years, just really wondering why on earth there are, what, 30, maybe more American candy stores, all selling the same sort of stuff, all more or less empty, and you know selling very overpriced products, obviously a lot of out-of-date products as well you know, why they're there. And I think it was perhaps that, that number of them that really started to alert people to the fact that something was wrong here or something just didn't add up. I have seen that one landlord has shut a, a store down because after they were supposed to vacate, they carried on trading and they, they uh, closed it down and, and kept the goods. But clearly a lot of what's being sold in these stores is out of date, it's hugely overpriced. I mean, there was a story of somebody being charged 45 pounds for a packet of sweets, which obviously asks the question about who on earth would hand their money over. But nonetheless, I've seen in your reports as well, how much a lot of these um, sort of really quite cheap products are being tried to be sold for. The situation at the moment seems to be that the landlords are subletting and then the subletters are subletting again under license. That's where you then have operations which are very complicated, shell companies, companies that are very hard to trace and clearly who are very hard to extract tax from. And hopefully as they start cracking down on more and more of these stores, there's going to be more and more pressure on those landlords who are retaining American candy outlets uh, to do something about it. And at the moment it's just a complete mess. The candy stores have recently exploded in mainstream press since our report. And while dozens of these outlets are now currently on active investigations, 
premier shopping streets, Oxford Street in London, are now dotted about a series of sweet shops. Yet more continue to appear across the country. One thing is for certain, this story is far from over. <laughs>